Hi everybody, how are you doing? Happy Sunday here on the Cake Stuff page. Welcome to everybody. So I'm Suzanne Esper and today I'm going to be making an open peony, but I'm going to be doing it in an easy manner. Um, so I just want to say hello to a few people who are here already, nice and early. Um, let me just check. Hi everybody, oh, how are you doing? Need to turn Happy this off. So what I tend to do is have my phone on to make sure that I can basically we're actually live and we are and then I'll leave the sound on. So anyway, I've turned myself off. If you find that you get captions and you don't want them, you can swipe them away um, or you can go onto your, if you're on your phone, there's three dots at the top and um, you can just select to turn off the captions. Because I'm Scottish, um, fair, a fair few times that will be really random words that appear so if you feel distracted by the comments just slide them off as well and the captions so welcome to this lesson today and welcome to the cake stuff page and um, so I was just going to say hello to everybody before I started to hear myself speaking back to myself so we've got Michelle in the house Michelle was the first one in the door today so thank you for coming we've got Jean we've got Sarah We've got Rachel and Colleen and Jackie and Charlotte. Hi, ladies. Um, I've got Darren as well. Hi, yeah, how are you doing? We don't really get often many men, so this is fabulous. Um, so welcome to the Cake Stuff page. Um, so we're going to be making an easy open peony. Um, you would have seen the poster going around where it was actually this flower here. Um, so this is actually, this is a coral charm peony. So this is a really full one. We are going to be doing a really simple version of this. Um, basically, it's for any level, um, even if you don't have any flower experience at all. Um, we are go I'm going to take you by the hand and I'm going to take away all the fear um, for making sugar flowers because they are really easy to do. Once you get into the knack of it, once you get a few trials as well, um, you will be pumping these out for your business left, right and centre and they make an absolute beautiful uh, statement on cakes, be it celebration cakes right through to wedding cakes. Um, so this is what I'm here today to do, is to try and show you some easy ways of making sugar flowers. Okay, so we're going to be doing a peony. As I say, it's not that full version. We are going to be making a really, really simple version. And I'm going to be using my own cutter set that I designed specifically for my peonies. Um, so this is just one of them that I'm going to show you today, but we've got many more. Um, and I'm just going to bring them out so you can see them. Um, just so, let, let me just get them in order. So you know how to do this yourself when you're at home. I've got a few leaves as well and I've got a calyx. So I'm just going to go to the above so you can have a wee look at this. Okay, so these are my cutters out here. So you've got a set of five, whoops, going from the smallest right through to the largest. Today, we are going to be concentrating on just two of these cutters. We're going to be using these ones here. So typically, when you look at peonies, you'll see there's a whole variety. Um, some are really roughly edged, some have got the scallops, some have got really straight edges. You'll often find that petals are mixed in each of the peonies. Um, so we're going to be using these ones today. These are the probably the more stylized uh, cutters. So this is what you're probably used to seeing from other people as well. And these are great if you're wanting to create these roughly petals. But today I'm going to show you how to use these but keep it quite smooth, like you would expect if it was a coral charm peony. Um, or any of the other like sort of smoother peonies um, and this is um so I've got a leaf cutter set here I've lost one in there we go I'm not going to be showing you the leaves and the calyx today however I have actually made them so I'm going to be putting them onto my arrangement at the end so you can see that um, I do have a free tutorial coming out soon which is the full thing like the full version this is just a very quick simplified version and um, so if you would like to um, know when that's out uh, Cake stuff are going to be posting up a link to my mailing list. Just get your name on the mailing list and I will send you the details. That free class will be available pretty soon and you'll get the video and you'll get the PDF step by step. There's going to be lots more to it, so I'm going to go into depth using these here. Um, we'll dust them up and all the rest of it and I'll show you how to use those. But for now, um, I've already prepared these just due to time. Okay, but I, w I wanted to just also say as well, if you do end up getting the leaf cutters, you can actually pair the leaf cutters with the Ald Aldeval uh, veiners. Let me just come from the side to show you what they look like. So these are your typical leaf veiners, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, the veins are gorgeous and they match the size of my petals. I do have a smaller one as well, um, however it's not on the table. Um, so this one is beautiful. So exactly what you would expect from peony veiners. 
Um, so those are the Aldevar ones and these are available on Cake Stuff and they go hand in hand with my uh, leaf cutters and you can use it to vein your calyx as well. Okay, so first of all, what I would like to do is just show you the inspiration behind today's uh, flower. So I'm just going to get rid of the ones that we don't need uh, and I'll show you the veiner in a second for those ones. Um, so basically, I bought this book recently and this is a cracker. Um, it's quite an old book but it's absolutely perfect and this is basically how um, a lot of sugar florists get their ideas for colours, tones, styles etc. So this is just a peony book um, and the one that we're going to be making today is that I've kept that open because I want to show you the centre here is this sort of deep burgundy ready tone one. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's very very straight edged and plain. The book is full of incredible inspiration so we're going to be making petals that are quite flat curved but not too roughly you've got your roughly versions as well and we're not going to do that today that's a different lesson and um, so we are going to be doing this center as well with some stamens and um, however this is a center that I've chosen to do today very simple and easy so this this whole tutorial is based on simple techniques um, that give you maximum results in the shortest period of time so that is one of my kind of unique sort of um, selling points is the fact that I make beautiful sugar flowers but I can do it in a really fast way that's going to save you time, energy and money and it's going to bring profits to your business. So the whole point of this tutorial is to show you a simplified version which is why I've chose this centre here and we are going to pair it with, oh I've lost my page, um, these really simple um, petals on the outside. We're going to dust them up as well. So I've already prepared my colours. I'm going to show you what to do. Um, so I have my case already coloured up. So I've got it in this deep colour. I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. And the paste that I use is a blend of Sugar Floris Paste by Squire's Kitchen and Ultra Fine. This is um, Simply Heaven Ultra Fine. They're both white and I do like a kind of rough 50-50 mix. What that does is it allows me plenty of time to play with these flowers and especially since I'm going to be adding in a lot of colouring, colouring can often dry out your pace and we don't want that. So by adding in ultra fine you get a longer period of time to work with but you also have the strength that comes from Squire's Kitchen as well. So that blend together I really like um, and this is what I kind of typically use uh, in my sugar flowers. So it's a perfect blend. Give it a go. If you feel it's drying out too much, add a little bit more ultra fine. If you feel it's too soft and you're basically waiting around for ages to make it, you can add in a little bit more squires. It's going to work differently in each person's environment. Just have a play where you are. All right, so I've already pre-mixed these together. Now the green for the leaves I'm going to show you later was actually just made using ultra fine. This is foliage green and I sort of beefed up the color with a little bit of spruce green just because it's quite a pale green. Well, it's a it's a medium tone green, but I wanted it a lot darker for peony uh, petal leaves because they are much darker. So you can go ahead and, you can, I just find it easier to buy green paste and actually colouring it up. Call me lazy, that's fine, <laughs> I probably am. Right, okay, so this was made using three different colours. So the first one in the main colour is Burgundy by Progel. The second one is a little touch of a vivid red by Fractal. Now this one, if you're ever needing to do any red flowers, just go ahead and use this. It is incredible. It turns your paste red in a matter of moments. Um, it's super, super red. So when you're adding this to other things, you don't want to go over the top. Add a little bit at a time. And all I wanted to do was to take away, when you use burgundy, it's more of a sort of purpley burgundy tone to take away that purpleness because the flower that we're actually doing is actually quite dark. It's a dark burgundy and it's not on the purple tone side. It's actually more on the brown side. So with that effect, I've added a little bit of brown pro gel and that's going to help us get the tone that I was looking for. So I have already gone and I've cut out all my petals. I've all dried. However, I'm going to demonstrate how to make the petals just now. Um, and this will save us a little bit of time and I've dried mine overnight so they I made them last night just before I went to bed I wouldn't tell you the time um, there was no alcohol beverages involved however it was late <laughs> so they've been drying since probably about 12 um, so I'm going to pop these away and you should be seeing some links go up on the screen there if you want to purchase any of this 
And also, Cake Stuff are going to be posting up a little materials list that I put together for you that's going to help you um, just remember what it is that I'm using today um, the different like, tools you'll need. So the first thing we've got to do, and you can see here it's not that purpley uh, burgundy. This is actually the tone that I'm looking for and it dries quite a nice dark tone. Okay, and then we're going to dust this up to give it a little bit more depth of colour. Okay, so you want to warm up your paste. Now, it might start to get a little bit sticky, so this is a point where you want to sort of rub your hands in a little bit of shortening. So that's Trex or Crisco. <laughs> so Terry's saying she's loving the subtitles. You maybe want to um, put them off. Like maybe just hit the three dots at the top and get rid of the subtitles. Um, so that's funny. So Leslie's asking what book was that? I can post up a little link. It's a, a book that's not in stock really. So um, I had to find it in one of the online bookstores. So I will post up a link to that um, afterwards. Oh, so June's saying beautiful colour. Thanks for joining us, June. And hi, Caroline, how are you doing? Can you show the book cover again? Absolutely. So this is a peony, so this is an actual how to grow peonies, basically, um, which is something that I actually need um, because I am terrible at plants and keeping things alive. So I need to take note of this. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's Martin Page. Um, so you have a wee look there, but you might struggle to find it, but that's not to say look at any like peony books because you will get a lot of inspiration from them um, so Josephine's asking what colour is this so it's basically burgundy mixed with a little bit of red and a little bit of brown okay so now I'm just going to I've got too much shortener on my hands so I'll just mix that in a little bit more um, okay so if you've got a pasta machine this is the point where you want to actually roll it through your pasta machine um, I will not be doing that I'll just do it on the, the board so I can show you how thin I want you to go so with this peony, we are not going mega thin, only because the, the veiner that I'm going to use has got deep crevices in it. And you've got two options, actually. You can use a rose veiner or a peony veiner. Now, the peony veiners sometimes have got deeper ridges, and that's the one that I'm going to be using today. And when it's got deeper ridges, it can sometimes like cut the pace. So we are going to be rolling it thin but it's going to have still a little bit of weight to it. So I'm going to roll this out so it's completely sticking because of the shortening. So now you need just a little bit of corn flour. Don't worry about the corn flour in the back because you will be dusting these anyway and you'll never see it. By the end of it, you'll not see any corn flour. Okay, so if you find when you're rolling your paste it's not stretching, it's because you need some corn flour underneath. Okay, so let me just... <laughs> oh, I can never roll a circle or anything. It's just ridiculous. Um, so I have no idea. It's like a cross here. An X marks the spot for is it? Okay, so let me just look at this. So I'm going to cut down the sides actually just so I can see what I've got a little bit clearer. So I've just got a little wheel tool. I love these tools. This is just a PME one. Okay, so they're really handy to have. I'm going to pop this away because there's no point in wasting it. Um, if I can find my actual bag. Okay, but I need to get this a little bit thinner, okay? So if I show you, actually it's not too bad. Let me show you from the side. Okay, so it's about about a mil to two mil thick, okay? Um, if you want it thinner, go for it, but I'm just gonna keep it about this thickness. And I'm gonna keep the bottom of the petal fairly thick, but the top's gonna get thinned out really nicely. Okay, so as I mentioned before, Oops, where is the cutters? I'm going to be using both of these cutters here. So I've went for the more stylized cutters. Um, these ones are the second and third in the set. And obviously when you're cutting out your paste, you want to be quite economical where you cut it. Um, we are going to be cutting at least six each of these. Um, always, always cut out extras. I'll just cut out um, two or three of each. I'm just going to show you what to do. And also, actually, um, I did actually use the big one as well. So just for, I haven't put this together, so I might not use it, but I may as well show you what to do. Okay, so I'll just cut out another two of these of each. There we go. So we've got two of each. And then what we'll do is I'm going to put them into a little wallet. It's just plastic, basically, to stop them drying. Okay, and we're going to use this for... A method that I love called the twiddle method. 
Now, what I thought I would do as well, actually, while I remember, is I'm going to show you how you would actually wire it up if you wanted to use a groove board. Because I, in true nature of how I teach, I like to do things fast, okay? So for me, the groove board slows me down. And if I was basically going to be spending four hours on the one flower, um, if it was a competition or five hours or a whole day, then this is what I would do. I'd actually use a groove board. Okay, so this is by Pullinger's and it's got these little deep crevices here. Now what we would do is we're going to roll our paste in over these crevices and it's going to allow us to have a channel on the back of the petal where we would feed the wire up. Okay, and that is like kind of conceals it a little bit easier. And that's perfect if you have time to do this and also if you're going in for a competition. However, if you're looking to make a profit in your business and you want to speed up rather than slow down, then I'm going to show you a method in a second which I use for about 95% of all my wired flowers. Um, there's a few occasions I don't use it, um, but I often go through that when I've got those classes running. Okay, so first of all, you, I'm not going to use that amount of paste, I'll just use a little bit less. I'm um, going to get my rolling pin. So I'm just going to start rolling it over. You'll find that it might come out of the well, but eventually it'll stay in. So what you do is I'm going to roll that over the edges. I'm going to widen it so that when I cut with my petal that I've got enough paste going round. We also want it thin enough that um, you don't really need to do that much more work after it. And because it's went into the channel, when I peel this off, it'll have a really lovely um, channel going down it here which is where we would put the wire, okay? So then what we'd do is, I'm gonna move this away. As I say, I don't mind groove boards, it's just the fact that I don't tend to use them if I am doing flowers for an order because I'm generally wanting to make some profit in my business. Um, and I feel like by doing one petal at a time, it's too slow. Um, but that's just me, like, and I'll probably get shot in the foot for this by many um, more seasoned flower sugar crows. But anyway, uh, this is exactly what I do in my business. So um, I'm going to keep it real and tell you exactly what I do. Okay, so then what we'll do is I'll show you the next stage with uh, just these cut petals. And then I'll come back to this one and I'll show you how to feed it up, uh, feed the wire up the bottom. So we are going to be using 26 gauge wire. Um, these petals are like a reasonable height and weight um, but you could probably get away with 28 gauge wire for your smaller ones and then 26 for your rest however in the interest of my time and your time I am just going to be lazy and I'm going to stick to 26 okay so I don't I'm not going to sweat about um, the difference there like if you're not familiar with um, basically wires the higher the number the thinner the wire is but you've got to remember that if you use 28 gauge wire, 38 gauge wire, it needs to support your petal. Now we're going to be drying this into a really lovely curved shape. If it's on too thin a wire, it will just bend back the way and we don't want that. I want to have the ability to bend this into shape, which is why I prefer a slightly thicker wire such as the 26 on for this occasion. Um, so that's why I'm using that. So what I like to do is I'll cut these into threes and um, basically I want a little bit of length on them. I don't cut them into fours because if I do that I feel like the wire's too short for me um, and I'm only going to be annoyed at myself later. So I've got my wire cut. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these petals out because we actually want them a little bit longer, okay? Now what I'm going to do here is just put my rolling pin on the end and I'm going to stretch that up and I'm going to concentrate on rolling it over those ends there, okay? And then peeling it off, you'll notice that the base is thicker than the, um, the actual, oh, let me see if I can go to the side here. So it's a wee bit difficult to see, but it's a lot thinner at the top here than it is at the base point here. Um, so you just have to take more for it, right? So that would be one. So I'm going to do that for another one as well here. So this is just the same size again. So I'm going about the halfway point and I'm really leaning down into it. And we're going to do a little bit more work on it, but if I roll my finger over this, you can feel how smooth it is. It's, it's just, it's really flat. Whereas at the end, I can feel the bump, okay? So then, basically, let me grab my petal pad. So I'm going to bring this over. This is before we put the wire in. 
Um, let me just do one at a time. I'm going to grab my ball tool and I am going to go for the smaller end and I'm just going to stretch it slightly. Now we, there's quite a few things that we can do to this petal such as if you don't like the three scalps, if you find it when you roll it, this guy is really long, you can actually just move that over and sorry, knit it into the other um, well. And so you've got complete control over this. And now by me just rolling that on the end, I've really thinned it out and it actually looks like broken petals, but it's really, really nice. And it's a wee bit difficult to see there. But you can see that at the base there, it's just a little bit broken and that's going to be fine. We're going to put this into a mould in a second and um, you'll see what I'm going to do there. So the next thing I've got to do is to get my twiddle ready. So this is the alternative version. So imagine um, what we do is, so this thinned area here, we'd have to do that after we wire it up. So I'm going to wire this up just now. You need to get yourself some edible glue or some water or egg white. You dip your wire in and then take the excess off, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the petal between my finger and my thumb and I'm going to start to feed the wire up into that thicker um, crevice area, okay? Just push that in. What we're trying to do is to not have the wire come through the front or the back. Now, this is my nemesis. Um, I always either come out the back or out the front. I can't help it. It's just uh, me. <laughs> so what I would do is, we're going to get this veined in a second. Um, so I'm going to leave that there just now, but we'll go on with this one. So for the twiddle, it's just that 26 gauge wire. You need some thick, um, some fresh paste. So this is stuff that's not been lying out. It's not been exposed to the air because if it's any way dry, so you can see this is really tacky. If it's in any way dry, it's not going to hold this petal, okay? So I'm just going to wrap this round and roll it back in my fingers, back and forth, and I'm going to thin that down. And I want my wire to go in, not quite a third, but just before the halfway point. Just by the way we're going to bend it, I don't want this wire to pop out. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down there and then clean off that. Now, if you wanted to use green wire, you can do it. We're not going to see this wire at the end anyhow, because we're going to basically... Um, wrap it with green florist tape okay so now let me just pop this into my wallet to stop it drying you must do that don't make too many twiddles before you go too far um so the veiner that i'm going to be using is one like this this is a, an actual peony veiner and i'll show you the veins from the side so this one is really deep and you have to watch out for the deep ones because they sometimes uh, rip your pace but this is what you would expect to see for a more stylized peony because actually when you look at peonies in the flesh they don't have these deep crevices such like this it's more like a gentle rose veiner however in order to see the veins we have to do um we have to use like a little bit of a heavier veiner so this one is from sugar art studio however on the cake stuff website you will find that there's a, a company called aldeval who have two different veiners which would actually do the job as well um, and that is a frilly orchid uh, veiner and the large hibiscus. So if you search for those, you'll find that they've got similar markings. Um, so you can give it a go. Okay, so now I've got my twiddle. It's still tacky. What I'm going to do is I like to just turn this over because the underside is not as dry as the top. I'm going to line up that twiddle. Remember the bottom of my wire is clean. It's just got the stain from the paste. I'm just going to push that in to the actual petal. I'm going to lift this up and bring it over here, lay it into the back end of the veiner and I'm going to place the top veiner on top and give it a squidge down. Okay, now I know that this veiner can sometimes cut some paste just because it's got so many beautiful um, indentations. So what I want to do is I want to secure the wire to the paste. So I walk up here, okay, and then just make sure the rest of it's got a really nice push. And when you bring that off, I hope you can see this from the side, um, you can see, if I just twist it, you'll see the veins there. Really, really beautiful. Okay, and then pop that back onto your petal pad. Now, if you were doing the one with the wire, I'm going to have to um, secure that first. So remember, there was a little bit of glue on my wire as I pushed it in. And now it's a kind of case of just sandwiching those together. Okay, 
and again that's all really really nice now what's important here if you were doing a competition you can hardly see that wire if i just turn this over you can see a little bit of my wire here but it's only slightly i've got a little bit less paste there and um, sometimes if you're using say lighter tone a paste let's say it was white or a pale pink you can sometimes see the join but very very minimally whereas when you actually do it in the groove board for competition work that's exactly what you need to do because you've got less chance of seeing that wire and you may need to play about with the weight of your wires you might need to take it down a notch so that you definitely don't see it because you would get marked down for that okay but thankfully i don't enter the competitions so um i'm just going to wire on the way that i do all right, so now I've got this on top and I'm going to use a small ball tool again just to kind of bust the end a wee bit more. But also what you can do is you can switch to just a dressing tool. So the kind of spoon part, I am just going to run that over the ends here. Now it looks a little bit flaky, but that's because I've been talking to you far too long and it's now drying out. However, the other thing that you can do as well, if you want more of a curvy, um, sort of roughly uh, open peony, what you're going to do is you're going to use the side of this tool and you're going to just draw that in several areas going down so you bring in those ends and then you would dry that flat well you dry it actually in an apple tree so i'm going to bring over my apple tree now um basically i'm going to use an apple tree and i'm going to show you um, a ck former as well so i've got my apple tree here and all you would do is you would just lift this in and bend your wire to the shape of the apple tree and you do not flatten out your petals, you just leave them curvy and um, you just want to leave them to dry completely. I'm going to repeat this again, but I'm going to show you how I did it last night, which is nice and flat um, because I, I wanted it more flat to match um, the flower that we're trying to copy. Okay, so let me just bring this up. So hopefully I haven't um, missed any of these out. I'm going to, my phone's just turned off so I can't see the comments. Give me two seconds. There we go. So Barbara says you can't get rid of the subtitles. There should be three little dots somewhere on the comment section at the top um, and you can switch those off if you're on your phone. So we've got Paula who's joined as well. Thanks Paula and Gwen. Um, and we've got Michelle as well. This is my first time watching Susanna. Well, thank you, welcome. Um, I'm glad you're here. And we've got Nikki as well. Um, oh, and Sarah Jane's joined us too and Debbie. Thank you so much. Okay, and then Debbie's just asking, uh, would this be available to watch later? Yes, you'll be able to catch up with this at any point. And if you are interested in the full version of this tutorial, uh, it's going to be free as well. You can just pop your name into my mailing list sign up and you will get the notification when that's going to be and where it's going to be located. So make sure you pop your name down. Don't worry, I don't spam you. I just <laughs> send invites to classes and offers and you'll see things like when we've got like the, the offers that we're on today, um, basically the competition, to win a full set of these peony cutters. So these have literally just come out. Um, so basically if you want to, like, so we've actually drawn the winner, but if you want to take part in things like that, make sure you're on both of uh, Cake Stuff and my mailing list because that's where you find out first how to join in. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna bust those edges. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flatten that down slightly, okay? So then I'm going to bring back that apple tree and I'm just going to lift it up and drape it into the well and then I'm just going to bend it so that it's got the curve of the actual, the actual apple tree. But I'm not going to flatten down everything here because I already did it on the table. I, it's not something that I want super flat because no flower actually is. All right, and then depending on how you, if you leave this for like say five minutes, you can actually bump it up a little bit so that you get more of a deeper curve round as well. Okay, so there's a couple of little tricks there. Um, and then I'm gonna show you, um, so basically if you wanted to use, there's a CK, this is a plastic CK former, which you can get from Cake Stuff. Now this one is fabulous because it's a half sphere and if you wanted something a little bit more curvy, so I've, I've actually dried a couple of petals in this already, you'll see there that that curve is really, really close. So if you're wanting to do like almost a closed peony, so you just see the center and those petals are coming round, then you need to actually use like a half sphere that's going to help you do that job because it's really difficult to actually get the curve onto your flowers. So this is what we use. Um, and I've got a whole variety of these. They come in different sizes for all of your different flowers. However, if you struggle, you can always use 
an apple tree. These are absolutely perfect and obviously food grade, so it's all good. But we won't be allowing our customers to eat these anyhow because we're going to dust them up. They've got wires in them, so really it's all okay in the end. Um, okay, right, so let me just clean this up. Right, so I'm just going to quickly rattle through the next ones just so you can see these sizes. So again, bring it onto the table. I'm going to, um, you see how I'm really leaning down on that? I'm giving it all my weight, which we won't discuss what that is. Um, but it's got the full weight behind me. And uh, I'm going to do the other one as well, so we can just get a wee production here. So what I would do is I would actually get my production going. And this is how I speed up. So you would do a couple like this. Don't do too many because it dries out. Okay. And I'm going to get my little twiddle here. So and I'm just going to bring this down. So this twiddle method was actually, I was a lady, I think her name was Lynn Cook. Please, if I've got that wrong, let me know because I often get uh, muddled up between Anne and Lynn Cook. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's Lynn Cook um, from the Sugar Craft Guild. So thank you because this is the best method there ever is for getting your wires onto petals. And if I've got that wrong, somebody can correct me. Okay, so then quickly get it into the vener, pop that over. We will be smashing the ends in a second. Oh, see, I pressed a little bit too hard now my wire's quite near the top, but it won't matter because I'm going to dust it up, so we'll never see that. So sometimes you'll, you know, give yourself a little bit of grief when it comes to doing sugar flowers. It's like, oh, I can see the wire. If you're going to dust that, um, you'll not see it, so don't panic. And if you're not going in for competition, a highly, um, it's highly unlikely that your customer or your family is going to say, by the way, I can see a little bit of wire there. Um, and if they do, then they don't get it again. <laughs> okay, so bring this over, up and over and slide it in. Okay, so I can make one of these in about 30 minutes. And that is, normally I'll do six smaller petals and six larger. But we've got a couple of different petal sizes going on. So when I get to the end, we'll count them out and I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I've used. Um, okay, so basically I'm going to quickly smash the ends of these. So just give that a little ball tool on there. And again, if I wanted to, like, basically have these overlapping. So say, for instance, I wasn't really keen on that shape and I wanted to basically have that a little bit more closed, I'll just pinch that together. And now suddenly I've got a different shape. Now, when you look at petals, like, from different peonies, they've got different shapes. Like, some of them are, like, like a, a... Do you know how you get those... Uh, toe trainers <laughs> that have got the, the thing between the toe it's like that you know you've got a wee hoof um same with this one here these ones are more stylized as i say you can basically do whatever you want with these petals and they're going to look really unique every time you do it okay so i'm just going to smash those ends up okay and then we'll get that in the well in a second as i say if you want to curl it just draw down your um ball tool Okay, I'm just stretching out those ends slightly and it's going to make it look more see-through at the ends, which is quite hard to do with a solid colour like this. However, when you can do that, the light will refract through the edges of that and it's going to be gorgeous. Okay, so um, as I say, I'm not going to bother doing the deep veins. It's already got it. Uh, I'm just going to bring over my apple tray and make sure that the inside of the petal is facing you. Okay, and I'm not going to bother flattening down those wee edges. I'm going to keep them like that. Bring this over in here. And then we'll just stick that one up. Okay, so I'll just, what I'll do is I'll demo one of these guys just so you can see it. And then we'll crack on. So I hope the weather's good where you are. It is slightly overcast here today, but I'm hoping that after this live I can go out and get a wee bit of a walk. I'm trying to get healthier. So, okay, so that's nice and thin there. Get my twiddle ready. It's such a beautiful colour. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Brittany clicks add to basket. Honestly, this cracks me up. Thank you, ladies. I um, kicked off, attempt away. I was going to peek anyway. That's brilliant. I love it. So, uh, Danica says, does the ball tool not get uh, rid of the veins? Not really. Um, if you want, like, you, it's only going to, the ball tool is literally going on the very tips. So it's not actually going into the veins. And when you look at the peonies, you'll notice it doesn't have, like, really distinct edges on it. So 
even if you did flatten some of them, it's not a problem. And remember, this is like we're not we are not creating anatomical, uh, anatomically correct penis. If we were, we'd be here for a whole day, and that's great. That's called art. What we're doing is half between art and half between making some money in our businesses, so we can cut a few corners when it comes to things like that. But don't worry, because look at I mean those veins are really really lovely and deep. So again, I'm just going to bring this here. I'm going to get that ball tool. Just bring that round. I don't want to. What I don't want to do, and I'll show you at the side here, see if you roll that back and forth, you can see that it goes really roughly. There's a place for this on different penis, that's your more roughly ones. For me, I'm just wanting to stretch that out so that I can see through the ends of the tips, really, really nice and fine and delicate, and then get that dressing tool in here and just smash your ends, okay? And then again, we're going to put that into an apple tray. Bring that down. Okay, and then they would go away and dry. And then, in true Blue Peter style, they're all dried up now. Okay, so bring those over. So I've got a couple of different sizes um, cut out, as I've said, um, using the different methods. So now what I'm going to bring over is my dust tray. Um, so we're going to get dusting. Then we're going to make the centre and then we're going to put it all together. Okay, so if you've got any questions, I will try and keep up. Um, just please, um, just ask away. Uh, and if I, I do miss them, I will come back to you. Um, or you can always contact me, you can just email me. Right, okay, so I want to talk through the dust. So I've got, um, basically, I'll just bring this over. I've got some burgundy here and also there was some black on the table. Hold on. And... I wanted to show you this as well. If you can't get burgundy, you can always use like deep claret. So this is fractal. The burgundy is a uh, sugar flare, and I've got a little bit of black sugar flare because if I had to go ahead and just I've got the um the colour here and I've mixed a little bit of black in. If I just went ahead and used the colour, we wouldn't see it. Um, these ones here have been dusted with a little bit with the black mixed in with the burgundy, and what it's done is if I can show you here, if I bend that back. I'll just bring over one that I haven't dusted. You can see the tonal change. Now, this petal was dried flat in the apple tray. This one was dried in that CK former. And you can see that it's really curvy and a little bit more flatter there. So we're going to have a play with the different um, shapes on our peony. I might not actually use it, we'll see. Um, so for me, I'm just concentrating on the front just now um, because the way that this is going to go round, we won't see the back of the petals. But actually, I will dust because... Do you know what we will? Um, I've got this lovely brush from Caking It Up, which you can get from Cake Stuff as well. These are great for dusting. So I've got the fronts of these done. We will have a lot of production going, okay? So I'll dust the fronts and then I'll dust the backs and then we'll move on. Okay, so what you want to do is, this is a little bit of parchment. We've got some tissue paper here. I've already mixed some of the burgundy with the black and now I'm dabbing it on my paper, just so that I don't have lots of dust on my brush. If you, say for instance, I've got a little, um, this is one that I made during the week. If I had to put that on, it's really quite dark. So you want to just um, have a play first on the paper. Take off the majority because you can always like, build up the tone rather than taking it away. Okay, So that's just a wee spare one that I had lying. I often have them lying about just so that I can see. So I'm holding my petal on the wire and I'm bringing that dust from the base and I'm allowing the brush to kind of float up the, the petal. Now what I'm going to go, what I'm aiming for is a much more concentrated colour in the end here where the point is. Um, this means that I'm going to have like almost like an ombre -ish shading. So we've got the dark coming from the base and it's kicking up so that the tips of the, the petals are lighter. So as I say, I'm going to do the fronts first and then I'll quickly just run over the backs. Um, um, if you're never going to see the backs of the petals, then don't worry. But for this one, when I'm looking at Mother Peony just now, I can see the backs, so we will do it correctly. Otherwise, I'll get shouted at by my fellow uh, sugar florist saying, You're not doing this right, Susie. But again, it's like for me, like obviously, the most important detail is that on the front. Um, so if you're going to be doing a lot of dusting, Make sure you get yourself a little mask. Um, 
basically because it gets everywhere and it really has already started to coat my lungs. <laughs> it really has. Okay, so what I like to do is to bend back the wire just so that I'm not um, going to snap my petals, okay, and I can go quite quick. So I've already blended the tone, which is saving me a bit of time because then I don't need to go back over the top of black. However, when we get to the end, if I want to darken anything up, then that's exactly what I'll do. I'll take a little bit of the dark, just the black from the base, and just dip that in there, the ends. Okay, so I am just going to dust up a few more. You can see how fast this is. And it's a really, really nice, easy technique. Okay. And we'll get the backs in a sec. So let me just see. Uh, so Tracy says, I just bought the peony cutters. I spent a fortune already this week on cutters and banners. Shh, my hubby is, uh, let me see, in the next room. That's brilliant. I love it. Well, what we, what we tend to do is, if we are wanting to sneak in some stuff, we just say we want it in a competition. That always works well. I know that a few ladies in the group have used that very excuse when they've bought lots of the cutters. It's like, oh no, no, like um, Suzanne had a competition, you can even show them the competition and um, then you can say you won it and then everybody feels good. And you might even feel good yourself thinking that you won a competition. And we will get to the competition winner as well in the, later in this um, demo. So congratulations to someone, hopefully they're here. I don't actually know their name, I've just got a business name so I'll be shouting that out. Uh, at the end so keep watching right so this one's a bit of an odd shape so i might not be using that one anyhow right okay so very very quickly i'm just going to go over the backs just to take away just that really um plain look and also the fact that i picked up some dust from it just sitting on the pile of dust so be careful okay and you can see it only takes a matter of minutes to get these um, colours on here. With the darker ones, it's a lot more forgiving um, because if you do make a mistake, it's harder to see. So what I urge you to do, if you're doing light flowers, make sure you have a little couple of spare petals, even just some spare paste that's been lying about and you can just practice your colouring on it because once it's on, it's really difficult to get off. As I say, this is why I like actually dark, dusting dark ones because you can go really wrong and nobody can see really, so it's all good. And it is a subtle change in tone here as well, so you're not going to, it's not going to be in your face. But it's going to look so much better than just having um, the plain petals. And also, the colours lightened up since last night, so as it dries out, it's went a little bit lighter, so just be aware of that. Um, if you've went and spent time mixing up your colours and you think it's going to be bang on, then basically you have to know that it might change. Um, it doesn't happen that much. But this is just a slight um, shade lighter than what it was. And also because I've went over the ends and it's super, super light and fine, it's actually more see-through, so it actually looks lighter as well, which is what's going to look beautiful when we put this together. Okay, yeah, we're, we're done, thank goodness. Right, so I have some wipes. I'm just going to clean my hands. And uh, I'll get rid of this tray. So I like little dust trays because I want to contain the colour. Um, and this means it's not going to go all over my table, which is awesome. So I'm just going to bring these here. Okay. Now, the next thing is we need to make a centre. Now remember if we went back to the book, I don't I think I've closed the page. Um the centre that I'm gonna do, it's just a single centre. Okay, I know it's difficult to see here, but I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing. So I've already um done two centres so far. I'm gonna show you how to make another one just because I needed these dry. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread the centre through some stamens. If the head of the, the centre is not glued properly or dried enough, it'll just pop off and then you'll be raging at yourself, all right? So, uh, I'm just gonna pop that away. So the center, I've already got on a 16 gauge wire. So these wires, I absolutely adore. And it's basically how I make these big statement numbers, because this is super solid, 
So if I wanted to put this in a vase, or if I wanted to put it down the whole front of a cake, this has got strength to it. Basically, it's one of these guys in the inside, um, 16 gauge, and I've only just started using them this year, and I'm so glad I had the sense to try them. Um, because you can actually put two or three together if you want on a much thicker stock. Things like sunflowers, um, what else, daisies, they've often got a thicker stem as well, so you can afford to um, bump it up. So I use them for gardenias too. So these are these are brilliant. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've put a little head on the end of this. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the green and a little bit of Squire's white. So this is a foliage green. Just taking a little pinch off. And if you're like me, please make sure you um, seal the bags up because I don't know how many bags have dried out by not doing that. So this is some dry stuff that I used earlier. So I'll just take a little bit of the darker green, okay? If you don't have green, you can just always, always colour your own. Now I'm going for a really pale green and I'm going to put a little bit of dust on the surface. Okay, hopefully you can see okay. So Laura says she loves her delivery man, he's almost part of the family. We actually know ours by name as well. Um, always shaking their heads at us getting deliveries. Right, okay, so I'm just going to take off a little ball. Okay, let me just pop this down. If I had the other side of the mat on, you'd be able to see what size it is, but let me just... It's probably about a centimetre worth, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do is, the main thing is, is there's no cracks on it, and I'm going to roll it into a cone. Now, it's roasting in this room, so hopefully I'm not going to get a proper sweat on. Uh, <laughs> I can feel it already. Right, so what I've got here, I've got a 16 gauge wire. I'm going to chop one third off. Now, you need, I stole the, the hubby's um, plier, uh, cutters to do this. So, be careful, it's really strong. Right, I've actually ordered some professional um, wire cutters, but they've not arrived yet. Um, but a 16 gauge, you need something pretty heavy duty um, and you need a little bit of muscle, which I lack in both, so it's fine. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? You're going to now dip the end of the wire into your edible glue, take off the excess. I've got far too much there. Okay, and then feed the wire up the base of the neck. That's gross. And then I'm going to basically pinch down underneath, so this is like a semi-twiddle. So all it is is like pinching that down and then twiddling your fingers. That's where it comes from. The twiddle is you move your fingers back and forth to thin out the pace along the wire. And that's basically going to, when that dries, it's going to help secure this to the top of the paste, uh, the wire. Right now, I'm going to get some wee fancy scissors. So you can use like curved scissors. You can use, um, these are sewing scissors. Okay, and for this one, I've just got a little bit of, um, it's just a slight little chip in at the tip here, okay, that which I've dusted up sort of pinky aubergine, and then I'm going to add a little bit of green dust, and I'm going to put some lines on it as well, so I'm going to hold this and then start to snip in, obviously like hold it in your hands so that you don't um, end up chopping your fingers, um, and I'm, I'm making a little bit of a mess of this. But take your time, right? So you won't be doing it to a camera. You would actually have this flat so that you can basically cut it and look at it, okay? And then what I'm going to do is, you can see that's moving off my wire. Just flatten them in slightly, okay? Then I am going to either use like my dressing tool. This is a sharp end, or you can use like a cutting wheel uh, tool here. Let me just come from above. Okay, you, you can see how rich those um, petals are looking, it's gorgeous. So if it's a cutting wheel you've got underneath and just roll this up to the top and you would do that randomly round the side or if you don't have one of those you can use the sharper end of the dressing tool and create a line and a crevice going in. This is stylized. okay? If you had to look at the book you'd see that it's actually got lots of little lines going on it. Um, we don't need to do that because the chances of our customer dissecting our flowers to have a look in the middle is pretty slim. So now I'm going to grab the dust brush and just dab some of that colour on top and I've got a little bit of green on one of my brushes as well. 
I'm just grabbing that over. Okay, whoops. Okay, so with the green, nothing too heavy. I've got a lot of colour on mine. Okay, just bring that in. And I've got too much green on that. Don't listen to what I'm doing. And then I'm going to dab some of that burgundy on the end. And I'm going to try and blend that in, actually. I need a wee bit more burgundy. So just the same burgundy you've just used on your um, flowers. A lot of the um, peony centres are actually different. You will find that when you look at them. Some have got a really pale pink little soft end, which I've done recently as well on the big peony there. Um, I just wanted to do a really simplified version that was based on a real peony, which is basically what we've just seen in the book. All right, move that out of the way. Right, so now we are going to go ahead and get fancy <laughs> and like time consuming with some stamens. So what I'll do is on my free tutorial, I'll show you how to make some, but in the quickness of time, we are not, we're going to be using some pre-made ones. So these ones, so it's quite tricky to find a lot of stamens. These ones have got long heads on them. So these are like little lily heads. Um, they're actually called long, long headed stamens. Um, but also you can get these ones from Cake Stuff, which are lily heads. These are slightly fatter, um, but they would actually do the job. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these ones because it's the colour that I want. Okay, so this actually matches really perfectly in the book. Um, and these come, they're, they're the same normal width as stamens and they come in little packs, they're already tied. So depending on where you get them, um, I'm going to cut these down the middle, but I'm going to leave the tape on them because this is really going to save you time and energy. What I want to do though is to try and cut it in the middle. Um, watch your fingers, we don't want any cuts. It's important you leave that tape on because that's really going to help us, okay? Um, and then what I'm going to do is, so these are the ones that are dried already. Let me just see, I quite like this one. You shouldn't have your favourites, but anyhow, that one is winning. And then I'm going to grab, so for this one, I need a little bit of strength. So I'm going to go for the full width green tape. So I'm just going to take a length off. And depending on what colour your flower is going to be, you can um, use different greens. This one's going to really suit this tone of burgundy. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, before I even go close, I'm going to start to twist these slightly so that they're not uniform, okay? Because like, there's nothing worse when you just see straight stamens. Well, there is something worse. It's using no stamens at all. That's always not good. But you can also use, um, these are just little plain white ball headed stamens. So these are matte. Now you would just colour them up your shelf. They're not long, but this is what I've used for years. And this is just an upgraded version. So basically you use whatever stamens you can get a hold of. Now these can be expensive, the stamens, like these lily heads are quite expensive. Um, so just basically you can either make them yourself or you can just basically shop about and get some stamens. All right, let me just pop this on. So what I'm going to do is these heads are going to go round that middle, okay? So they're going to be higher than the centre. So when you look in, if I show you that at the side, when you look in, it's not right at the tip, so I'll be able to we play about and mess those round a little bit. But the first thing I've got to do is to start adding some because what's going to happen is I'm going to get all this is my husband's favourite thing that he hears me say on my videos fingers and thumbs. It always takes, um, it always like, winds me up about that because it is, it is. I'm all fingers and thumbs when I've got too many things in my hands. Okay, so you see, I'm just going to build this up, keeping it at the same height. And then I'm just going to add those round. So what I've done in the past is I've actually had a little, um, I'll show you on this one what I would do, is actually thread something through the middle. However, um, I'm just wanting to be able to control how these are going on. Okay, so that's two. I was just getting a little bit ahead of myself there. You should have only had one at a time. Bring your tape down because what we don't want is a really, really fat neck. Okay. Just going to have a wee look. And if it looks a little bit sparse in an area, you can always overlap and put more in. Okay, because I can see one little bit that looks a little bit thin. Okay. 
And if you are wanting to make these, you can make them while watching your favourite programme, whatever that may be. Okay, so you see now, I'm just bending this back the way, just so that I can create a little bit of space around my centre. And then I want to twist these. Now, you can go even fancier by dusting up the edges of these with a little bit of a darker tone of orange, just capturing the ends, and that's something that I'm going to do afterwards. But right now, we're just going to move ahead. So let me just pop these out of the way. Now, if you had a little bunch like this, what you would do is you'd make sure they're all around roughly the same height, okay? Now, this is really lightly tied with a bit of wire, so I did that myself. And then what I would do is I'd actually make just a little bit of a well in the middle and then feed my wire down, okay? Bring that in and around, and then I'd tape that up. Okay, I would actually trim these down a little bit because they're just a little bit too long, so that's going to add bulk to the neck of a flower. But you'd have these all dusted up, but that's just one way that you can do it. Um, but what I found was I couldn't get them sitting evenly distributed, okay? Um, so let me just now come from the top. Right, so this is where we're going to have a little bit of a play. So I have a couple of the really curvy ones. Now these ones were sitting in the CK former. So if you imagine a flower that's been really tight, like like basically it's a new flower, it's got a head on it and it's just about to spring open. The ones in the middle are much tighter round the centre. So I'm going to use these more cupped ones round this centre here. I'm going to have a look at it. If I don't like it, I'm not going to add it, okay? So what I'll do is before I even go near the centre, I always bend them back at the neck and this is going to speed you up no end when you get to put all these on. So just go around. So normally I'll have six of the smaller petals going around the middle and six of the larger. I do have spares because I might make this slightly larger than what I usually do. And that is a woman's prerogative and we get to change our mind as we go along. And if it looks rubbish, then uh, I won't. <laughs> so I will be making this up as we go. Okay, so bend those right back. Hopefully today we won't actually get a delivery as well. Since my studio is at the front of the house, to often come and chat my door. Okay, so that's fine. That's a, one of the larger ones. Okay, so that's a, the bigger shapes. We'll have a wee look. So what I'd like to do with those ones is actually have them coming right down, hang below. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this up and over. Okay, that looks actually nice. I'm going to get the three going round. So I'm going to, you can see here that it's not, this is the bottom of the stems under here. I'm not going to start that petal below there because it's too low. What I'm going to do instead is have it start so that it's actually curving over the top of these. Okay, this is where we're going to switch to the half width because we are going to add quite a bit of, well, some petals on. So we don't want to bulk up where we don't need to. So always start below just to get a kind of run at it. I'm going to bring this up and round. Okay, so I've only got three of those ones. Um, so that's fine, I'm just going to space them out a little bit and a little bit of a triangular, oops, see how I broke that, that's fine, it actually still looks good. So don't be clumsy like me. Okay, I'm going to bring this down because I can feel the wires twisting. So see if you put a petal on and it starts to move about, you have to bring your tape further down just so that it sort of captures it in position. So I'm going to have this flower just like the picture where some was, one side was really closed and the other side was a little bit more open. So I'm going to be playing about with the positioning of the petals once they're in place. You can't do that just now because you're only going to drop them like what I did. Okay, so the first thing is just secure them first and then we can play about with them in a second. Now for the ones that are slightly more open, I'm going to have them straddling between these uh, more curvy ones. So it's almost like closing the gaps. Okay, again, I am not bothered that this isn't looking circular. I, I don't want it circular. Um, I'm not actually making a charm peony. I'm actually just making, um, I don't know what type this is, but it's lovely. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's lovely. Um, I will give you the right name later, but uh, it's not a charm peony. Okay, so this is looking really nice already. So again, keep that petal round about the same height we're closing in all the gaps. So this is my updated method for this really easy peony. 
So this is probably the most, the flower that I've made the most in my uh, career because it takes up a really lovely big space on a cake and how easy and quick is it to make and to put together. So for me, it was a profit builder. Um, so I would often design if I had a big arrangement to do and you know, even if it was a variety of flowers, it didn't matter. I would always have a couple of peonies in there because, well, these style peonies, because they were easy and quick to make and I knew that I could fill up a big space on the cake. And then, you know, things like the roses, um, dahlias, all of those guys, they take a little bit of longer to make. So therefore, depending on the kind of budget and the time, etc., you could use these flowers to basically bulk out your arrangements. Okay, so let me just bring that down. That's looking really nice. I'll show you on the side. So this is the coming together. Now I'm going to, I was hoping that that um, camera would move slightly just so that I can show you those, right? So I'm really liking the fact that this is a little bit haphazard just now. This is good. This is what I want. Okay, so now I'll come back to the top because I'll end up smashing it off the table. And bring that tape in. So with florist tape, you need to stretch it and pull it because it's got glues in it. If you don't do it, it's not going to hold your petal in position and you'll find that your wires are spin. So occasionally you're going to have to look at your petal from the top. I actually really like that as it is. Um, I might actually only add one more or will I go for the big guy? So I can have that. Let me see. No, I don't like that. See, you always change my mind when it comes to things like this. And that's the beauty of it. You get a little bit of a decision. Now, I'm purposely going to leave that little gap here because I really like that. Okay, and then I'm going to bring that tape down. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back with the thick um, full width tape and we're going to go down the full length of this. Now, what you can do if you want is you can debulk some of these wires, which is just basically trim them down. Um, what I tend to do is trim them at different heights so that you get more of a taper going down. Um, if you feel like when you get to the base, it's like got a wee skinny leg, um, which you all want, <laughs> basically you would actually put an extra wire, straddle it where it starts to get thin so you can bulk it out a little bit. Um, we've still got leaves to go on this as well, so it's going to look really nice. So that's what it's looking like from the top. Um, I'm just going to leave that there. I really like that. Okay. So move these out of the way. So let me just count. So I had three, six, so basically I've got three, four, five, six. So six wee ones, one, two, three, four, five, six large. So six and six, just the way I usually make it. Okay, so now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some pre-made stamens, um, not stamens, calyxes. So I've already dried these in my apple tray and I, I've, I've got them dusted up already and what I want to do is, I've got these ones wired, you can actually just cut your um, calyxes on and put them on. It's calyx, calyx. I always get told off because I always say it wrong. So I do apologise. If anybody's offended by the way that I say my words. <laughs> but I often like say calyx wrong. So I've said it right and my pal, um, um, will be, Marshall will be proud of me. Okay, so I'm going to tape that underneath here. So I've done three of these ones. So I'm going to put my cal calyx on before I put my leaves on. Now what I like to do is, basically, I don't often add calyxes if I'm doing roses or whatever because I always feel that they're going to break and often do. But I've purposely left this one thicker so that it's just going to skim the underside here. I'm going to show you this in a second. So you can see that there. I need this one a little bit closer. So you'll see it's wee leg there. I can pull that in tighter. So it's it's actually skimming the base of the flower. So now that I've got options, if I wanted to like sort of fluff this out, it's going to fluff the calyx at the same time. Now imagine you hadn't wired that calyx. It hasn't got that ability to do that, okay? So now I'm going to take the full length tape. I'm going to tidy this up and then I'm going to add my leaves, which I've also done as well. Oops. So I'm going to cover up all that white. So the fact that I've got white um, doesn't make any difference. So what I'm going to do as well, just to show you, 
as I pop that down. Be careful with your um, calyxes. calyxes. I'm going to cut this about there. I don't need that centre. Okay, and then I'm going to straddle that same height. I'm going to bring this over. Um, I'm going to do is I've got a little stand here. I'm going to bring this over and it's going to hopefully... Let me just move that up a wee bit. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just trim this slightly. Oh, there's method to my madness and I'll tell you in a second why. It's slightly thinner at the end there because I'm going to put it into a holder to stop it wobbling about. Okay, so bring that tape down and then what you do is you go over the end. Okay, this is just sealing your wire. Okay, so let me just grab my little stand just now so that I can get my leaves. So that's going to fit in there really nice. See how that's just holding it? Move that out of the way. And I'm going to bring over my leaves. So these were just, um, you can see that I dropped them this morning, which is just perfect because um, I just broke the ends off them. However, I will be using them for this demonstration. And uh, this size is the medium size, okay? So it was this size of cutter and I actually just put it on my ball tool in um, my pad and just stretched it out and I used the Al Aldeval veiner for the peony to vein it. And then what I'm going to do is, I've got this on a 22 gauge wire, so I'm just going to grab some more tape and let me just bring this out, it's a wee bit loose there. Make sure your tape is really fully stuck and then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold that out Oh, I really like that actually. I'm just bending it underneath here. I'm going to bend the, the head of it. I really like that. Isn't that my? I'm, I really like this. Um, pat on my back, Susie. Um, but no, I do actually really like it, so I'm quite pleased with this one. Okay, and then because I've just added that one wire. I'm going to take that tape right down and I'll add the other one in a second. So this is actually thickening up the stem as you would expect it. Okay. So that's looking really, really lovely. So if I show you that from the side. So this is what it's looking like just now. So I am going to put another one on there as well. Oh, that's really nice. Again, another pat on the back, Susie. You did good. The girl did good. So I'm going to bring that one there, that is lovely. Bring it down just a little bit lower. Okay, so this is the beauty of having on the thicker wires. You've got a little bit of control, you can bend it. And even once it's in, like, you know, you've got it taped up, you can actually still bend it without things going too floppy. Um, I'm just going to bring this down. Okay, so this one is too long, so I'm just going to trim that off. Whoops. So you do need some like decent uh, cutters when you're using the thicker wires. So again, just bring that down. There we go. We are on the home stretch here. Okay, and if you want a link to the materials that I've used today, um, it should be up on the cake staff, uh, on, on this feed actually, and um, you can download a little, um, what do you call it, there's a little cheat sheet for you, oh, I need to just thin this out a little bit, there we go, hold that there, like so, and I'm going to come back to the front, so, huh, I'm roasting now, this will look so nice on a cake, look at how nice that is, um, I absolutely love it. So this will look perfect on the side of a cake like I've got with the tulips, etc. I love that. It's absolutely gorgeous. So if you want the full version of this with the leaves, the calyx, the dusting, um, and I'll probably show you how to make the stamens as well, then um, there should be a link to my mailing list. Make sure you sign up because I'm putting this together as like a pro-recorded video. There'll be no like chit chat like this. It'll be just straightforward, me showing you what to do so that you can refer back to it. Um, and a little step by step so you'll get a chance to um, 
find out what it's like to be on any of my online sugar flower courses because that's what you get on those ones. You get the video, plus you get the live, plus you get the PDF step by step. So I'm going to give you a little taster of what to expect. Um, I do have some flower classes coming up. And if you want to see what classes I've got, you can go over to my website, which is SuzanneEsperCakeSchool.com and I've got f quite a few online classes that you can check out. And if you need any help, just drop me an email. I'm always at the end of it. So we've got the little tools material list that you can actually take. It's on the list somewhere here. Um, that's going to be a little handy reference guide just so you get all your tools ready before you start the project. So I've got those for all of my flowers so that basically I don't forget in the middle of basically putting these flowers together. It's like, oh, what did I do with X, Y, Z? It just reminds you exactly what you need before you start the project. Um, and if you need any of the tools and materials like the flower paste, the wires, the everything really, you can go onto the Cake Stuff website and you can purchase that. So I'm going to tell you about the competition that Cake Stuff are running. So last week um, we announced that somebody's going to win all of those cutters. So that's the five petal cutters for the peony, plus the leaves, plus the calyx, and a tub of eleganza. And basically that prize is worth 60 quid. Um, and I know lots of people bought the cutters because they actually sold out, which is incredible. Thank you so much. Um, however, if you were one of those that bought them and you win this, um, Cake Stuff will credit your account. So it's a win-win situation. And all you had to do was go over to our Instagram pages, our Facebook pages, and like the page plus tag some friends. So I am going to tell you who won. And it's RK Bakery. I don't know your name, but she's got a Mr. RK and she's got a little RK because that was on her bio. So whoever you are, massive congratulations. Just get in touch with Cake Stuff or myself and we'll get those cutters off to you and the Eleganza. And you can be making this stunning arrangement for your cakes. Um, and join up the mailing list so that you get the tutorial as well so you can see how to do all the rest of it too. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please just pop them on. Um, I'm, I'll be able to answer them now that I can actually see. Um, so we've got Miria, she says, Thank you, Suzanne, my second class with you, and it's been a fabulous journey. We'll be doing more. Thank you so much. Uh, Marie won, um, I did a little competition last week as well, um, which was basically sharing the hashtag. So actually, if you make this, please use the hashtag Suzanne Esper Cake School um, so that I can find your creations and then I'll share it to my page as well. And what I often do is pick winners from those people that use the hashtags. And Maria was one of them. So she won my O'Hara Speed Cutter Rose uh, Petal Fast Cutter and the Pom Pom Delia. Um, and I just wanted to say as well, in about a week or so, I'm going to be releasing um, the sign up page for the Pom Pom Delia as well. So that's one of my standalone classes. I promised it to my night school tours that I would do the renewed version of it. So you can get a chance to join that as well. So make sure you sign up my mailing list so you don't miss out and keep your eye on social media. Um, but she, she won the, the speed cutters for those. Uh, Sharon, um, Sharon says, brilliant, thank you so much. Catherine says, thank you. Linda says, what is Eleganza, please? So Eleganza is a modelling paste. It's, it's different from flower paste. It's got like properties that are more probably closer to sugar paste, but it's in between. So it's what you would use for, say, doing your models as well, but you can actually use it for flowers. So if you're wanting to make an all edible flower that's going to go on a cupcake, you can use the Eleganza as well. It's a little bit more pleasant to eat because it's not as hard and you get plenty of time to play with it and it smells incredible. And I use it a lot for all of my cakes at the back here when wrapping around for stencils. Um, so it's fabulous stuff. Um, so if you haven't tried it, please do. And that's available at Cake Stuff as well. Gemma said, love this, Suzanne. Must ask about your stand for your flower. I need one. Well, these bad boys are actually in production. So when these are available, you will get to know. If you're on the mailing list, if you're on Cake Stuff or mine, um, we'll, we'll shout out about these. But I'm really excited about these stands. Um, we've got quite a few things coming out, which is just awesome. Um, so I'm excited about those. But you'll find out more as soon as we get the full details. Uh, Jackie Harris, hi, how are you doing? I've not seen you for ages. She says, stunning peony, uh, stunning peony. Uh, thanks, Stan, that's brilliant. Um, and Cake Stuff has just posted up a, a link to the Eleganza, so you can check that out. So Monique says, now I have to make the peony from Night School 3 in this one. Yes, you do. So this is the Night School 3 peony. Um, you can see the difference here. So there's a place for both of these. 
this would be really beautiful on a, a smaller cake or even just like a single tier, a double tier, really elegant. This one here is a complete statement and you can find out how to make this in my night school three, which is coming up for sale soon. And if you want to do the easy version, this is your guy here. Um, and they're, they're both different and I will take some photographs of this, it's absolutely stunning. Um, okay, so let me just see if I've missed anything. Um, Okay, let me just, I'm quickly squizzing just to make sure I've not ignored Endy. Um, oh, glad to say it's beautiful. Get more inspiration. Thank you, Suzanne. You are absolutely welcome. Right, fabulous. Okay, so um, I will sign off here. And just to remind you, you can get all of these tools and materials on the Cake Stuff page. Um, feel free, if you have missed anything, you can always message me. If you need to find out what tones that I used, etc. and you forgot, uh, drop me a message and I will surely answer. Make sure you sign up to my mailing list. Uh, we need you on there so that we can tell you about the fabulous tutorials coming up. And I'll see you in two weeks' time. Again, I don't know what I'm doing for the next one. So, if you would like to put a suggestion forward, please do. Uh, I'm open to suggestions and we've got lovely Kerry um, from Angel's Kitchen here next week. I'm not sure what day Kerry's doing but you'll find out on the Cake Stuff page and we'll announce it um, and I'll see you back in two weeks. So thank you so much for tuning in on this Sunday um, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, bye.